All right, now we'll formally call today's meeting to uh, order. Uh, with the city clerk, please call the roll. Councilman DeCicio. Here. Councilwoman Gallego. Councilman Nowakowski. Councilwoman Pastor. Councilwoman Stark. Here. Councilman Valenzuela. Here. Councilman Waring. Here. Vice Mayor Williams. Here. Mayor Stanton. Here. We're lucky to have uh, Ms. Garcia, our interpreter. Please introduce yourself for the audience. My name is Maria Garcia. Yo me llamo Marielena Garcia y soy intérprete del idioma en español. Aquellas personas que necesiten ayuda en la interpretación, a cualquier momento de esta reunión, por favor, se pueden comunicar conmigo o cualquier personal de la Secretaría Municipal. Gracias. Thank you so very much. Now it's time for citizen comments. Citizens have up to three minutes to testify on any non-agendized uh, items. Uh, we reserve the first 15 minutes of today's meeting to do that. If it goes beyond that, and it looks like it will, there's enough people here for citizen comment. Uh, when we're done with the business of the City Council on today's formal agenda, we'll continue to hear additional citizen comments. Uh, one citizen has requested that uh, another citizen be allowed to donate time to them for citizen comment. Uh, as chair, uh, I'm going to, I've never actually had this happen before, uh, I'm going to uh, um, decide as the chair that that will not be allowed. You, each person gets three minutes, and if they want to, someone else wants to come and give three minutes, they can, but otherwise we could take the entire meeting with uh, citizen uh, comments. Does anyone on the council disagree with that interpretation about no, no donation of time for purposes during citizen comment? Excellent, thank you very much. First speaker, Anthony Young, followed by Frank Zhang. Mayor Stanton, members of the council, I have some handouts because I know that I want you to take some time to Thank read you. the details. So I will try to stay within my time. My name is Anthony Young and I've been in Phoenix for the last 48 years as an orthopedic surgeon and now a endoscopic spine surgeon. The reason for my presence is that I'm outraged by what I learned just two weeks ago of the offensive and illegal business tactics by David Tedesco and his companies. Arizona Asian Americans are mad as hell and will not take Tedesco's abuse anymore. Tedesco's business modus operandi and pattern of behavior is to use criminal intimidation tactics against the property rights of merchants in the Chinese community with a direct attack on their ethnicity, culture, and using intimidating suits to try to quiet them. My outrage is because I learned of this by going to Beijing Garden Restaurant and I was told that they couldn't serve me food because of what Tedesco did and you understand that. He is not only ruthless and his actions are criminal in my opinion, but he's not the type of corporate citizen that this community needs or deserves. My Asian American friends are all patriots and we stand <clears throat> for democracy, civil rights, and the Constitution. We have been members of the Phoenix community, Arizona community, without complaining, without asking for handouts, but we are very productive and our children are among the best of the best in their professions. Tedesco also misrepresented his ownership as the majority owner of units that he bought, but even though it's majority, he's told the title companies that he, was, he owned the whole thing. And so he was violating the rights of the minority owners who also have the same property rights. Now the city of Phoenix has an opportunity to save the Chinese Cultural Center as a microcosm of modern Chinatown, not the old Chinatown where uh, 50, 100 years ago that we were just minor merchants. We are now in the upper echelon of professions in all areas. So i like to just take the opportunity to appeal to the city council because I want to leave to let you know and the, the public to let you know 
Tedesco has awakened a sleeping dragon in Phoenix. He disrespects a culture that has years of history of hardworking people with ethnic background that is first to be passive and nice, but I happen to be American, not Chinese, since I came here in 1949. So, Mr. Chair, thank you very much for you, you finish up whatever thought you have right now, but we okay. have your written statement. We really appreciate it. We've got okay. many other people. Finally, speaking. what your Phoenix Council has a chance to correct these problems. And he can they didn't do that by denying the permits applied by Tedesco and at least delay the procedure while we go through the courts. So please don't let Tedesco destroy Kafka. Help us resolve and extend our opposition. And we have an opportunity to buy it back from this Tedesco so that he won't lose any money. So you so much having for said your that, I hope that you listen to the pleas of the Chinese community. Thank you for your testimony very much. How about Mr. Frank Zhang? <laughs> Followed by Mr. Kim Baker. Good afternoon, Mayor. Good afternoon, uh, council members. And we all know this week is a small business week. And uh, Mayor Stanton, you recently posted a tweet. It reads like, small businesses make up 95% of all businesses in Phoenix. They are the backbone of our economy. And we are very proud to support them. Today, what I like to talk about is a story about a small business, a Chinese restaurant in your city of Phoenix. Its name is Beijing Garden, and the owner is here. In past several months, Beijing Garden has been bullied, harassed, threatened, and insulted by its new owner and now facing to be closed. This entire nightmare began when True North, com True North companies from Scottsdale became its new landlord and decided not to honor the restaurant's five plus five lease, lease agreement, which was signed with the previous owner, a previous landlord. Last summer, True North bought 97 units of the Kafka Plaza and they wanted to move their own branches into this plaza. The units that Beijing Garden had been leasing are among those 97 units that True North they, uh, they now want to honor. According to the original lease contract, Beijing Garden had the option to renew their lease for another five years. When the first term ends, the, the restaurant submitted their renew notice to the new landlord six months before. The new owner, True North, refused to honor it, so they brought the case to the court. Before the court made any final rulings and without any court eviction orders, the landlord, True North, started to cut off the phone lines to the restaurant causing this small business unable to process their payment transactions. But they are not giving up. The, the, the small business restaurant, they had to use the cell phone, the mobile phone, and the cellular data to continue their business. And the True North claimed this cutting is an accident. And this accident, accident happened four times in a matter of a week. Then True North removed the exhaust fan above the restaurant in the middle of the night. Next day, they called Phoenix Fire Department, claiming there's a fire situation. When the fire trucks rushed in, of course, no fire was found. All right, Mr. Zhang, we've gone beyond the three minutes, so if you can finish up your point, we have many other speakers to go after you. Okay. Um, Anyway, the fire department issued a warning ticket for, for, to True North for their fake report. However, the restaurant was victimized. The fire department banned the restaurant from cooking because the exhaust fan was missing. Thank you. 
Anyhow, I like, find the last thing I like to say is, there's another restaurant called Sichuan Palace. It's also a small business. They owned the five units of Kafka Plaza since 20 years ago. True North only bought the rest of 97 units. True North is not the sole owner of Kafka. Thank you very they much. They are a co-owner. Thank you very much for your testimony. The next speaker will be Mr. Kim Baker, followed by George Papa. Thank you, Mayor, Good to Council see you. members. I do have a handout I want to put in your hands. The city clerk will, will re receive that from you. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Thank you, sir. I am um, here once again on behalf of my son, Joshua Baker. Speak into the microphone. Thank you. I, um, I'm appalled standing before you today. Um, in January of uh, 2016, uh, this letter was afforded to me from the city manager's office, assuring me that, um, that this city didn't want citizens feeling apprehensive about the treatment from the police. On the 18th of uh, last month, we had a hearing in the uh, city court in regards to the treatment that my son received as well as the citations. And I allowed your officers ample opportunity to tell the truth concerning the events on that day. Unbeknown to them that I had a video of the stop. They lied in court, salaciously against the, the character of a 16-year-old son who happens to be my son. Five minutes, maybe seven minutes of the video being watched by the judge, he said, I've seen enough. Dismissed all those charges against my son. As a dad, I'm proud to see my son face those officers. This time, he's not in handcuffs over a civil violation, but he can stand there and address those officers. As a dad, I'm very concerned. As a citizen, I'm more concerned that three of your officers will come in to a court of law. Had I not had that video, they would have gotten away with it. I want their jobs. Because if you all believe that they can serve out there in the public and then come into a court of law and lie about basic things, and had I not had that video, they would have gotten away with it. Officer Snow and Mosquita, I want their jobs. My son should not have to feel that he has to travel the streets fearing that they may retaliate against him. They are of the gang and task force unit. They seen three African American men in a car and assumed that they were gang members pull them over, not knowing that, and here's the irony of it, in the parking lot of the Salvation Army. God is on the throne watching this. I want their jobs. I thank you very much, uh, Mr. Baker. Mr. George Papa. Yes, Honorable Mayor Greg Stanton and council members, my name is George Papa, and I rise in support of preserving the Chinese Community Center and I, we've been here several times. I've been here twice myself. And we'd like to identify the problem. I appreciate what Dr. Young and others have said. And in terms of being able to arrive at a solution, I would simply reduce my remarks to say, would it be possible for executives that represent the Chinese community to, under the direction of the city council, meet with uh, perhaps the appropriate district member together with True North so that we can successfully ameliorate this on an amicable basis. We've tried to communicate with them. We've tried to go personally to their headquarters without success. There seems to be a massive impasse and consequently uh, to become effective, I put that on the table for consideration. Thank you. 
we can't discuss it in return. I apologize. Uh, it would be a violation of the open media. Is law. there so a we, mechanism in which we could do that? You, my only suggestion is maybe put it in writing to the city manager and he can present it to the council. I can't, we cannot in any regard discuss it in substantive way. It would be a violation of the open meeting law. I apologize, but that's the uh, open meeting law. We're simply trying to work within the system, and I thank you. Thank you so very much. Mr. Pat Vint, you're next, and I think that'll be it. Then we'll go back to uh, regular business of the council. Yes, I am uh, Joseph Patrick Vint. live at 8340 North 16th Street here in Phoenix. And the thing of it is, today I have so many thank yous to pass out for a few reasons. Why these people that are here that's been speaking up to now have the courage, which most people don't have, to come and complain at this citizen's comment situation. I just found out that um, Sal DeCicio's office and Ed Zerker's office have agreed to have a meeting with John Rusnick here, myself. We're both here together. He was one slot short to be able to speak this time. But anyway, what is wrong with the leaders of Phoenix and the United States of America? It's always the problem of the top. The top CIA, the top FBI, should be shot. It's terrible. Who in the hell do they think they are? This is awful. I mean, what do you think that you get appointed for? Why do you think people vote for you? It's because probably you're a bunch of liars. Because when you run for office, you're always saying, I'm going to fix it. We're going to fix it. We're going to fix it. The minute you get here, you fix nothing. This wouldn't have to be such a disaster, like my sign says on the pickup, the worst managed city in the damn world. And all those little letters is whether you believe you can do something or not, you are right. That is so true. Most people don't realize if they just stand up and bitch or what the hell it takes. Some people say you can't say that. And the best thing that ever happened in this world is President Trump. I tell you, he's got that little fat man changed over. They're going to put the two Koreas back together. That's the way it should have been. We were over there, John and myself, in 1951 and 52. John was in the Navy, and I happened to be in the Air Force. But I tell everybody there was good places and bad places in Korea. We replaced a B-26 bomber outfit out of California that got there instantly in 50 when the war started. Hell, we had barracks, we had everything. So it's not all bad, but those people that died, I mean thousands, to go over there and help them, and then most of them turn on us. And at least now we got a president that's going to make those bad people pay their own damn way, rather than the United States has to go around the oh, world thank you much. Mayor, thank you very much. and take uh, care of us. So oh. thank you. Oh. Mayor, can I respond to one thing? Oh, yeah, well. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Pat. Thank you for your service in uh, Mayor, Korea. And uh, we, can we I, fought for everyone's Mayor, can right I add one? Uh, for First okay. Amendment to say what you want in a public oh, setting. People Council. have a First Amendment right. And, I, and Mr. Vint, thank you, you know, but at the end of the day, you've, this has happened before. You cannot talk about people getting shot. It's just like beyond my comprehension level. Well, Mayor, Mr. Vent, I am asking it. I'm a, Mayor. That's unacceptable to use. We don't do that here. Okay, it's just something we don't do. No, you don't. Well, you're not. Okay. Well, you're not going to keep it up. I'm sorry. No, you're not. You cannot talk about people getting shot. Are we going to move on to today's uh, uh, agenda? Mr. Vint, I'm sorry. I just can't do that here. All right, we're going to move on in today's agenda. We're going to move on past citizen comment. There, there are other citizens here to provide citizen comments before this uh, city council. And those individuals, I'm sorry, Mr. Vint, we have, we're going to continue with today's meeting. 
Mr. Vent, we're going to continue today's meeting. Thank you. So we're going to move on uh, with the city clerk reading the 24-hour paragraph. Mr. City Clerk. The titles of the following ordinance and resolution numbers on the agenda were available to the public at least 24 hours prior to this council meeting and therefore may be read by title or agenda item only. Ordinances number G6454 through 6460, S44503 through 44549, and resolutions number 21633 through 21637. Thank you very much. Meeting minutes, Councilman Nowakowski gave it a chance to uh, review the formal meeting minutes, March 7th, 2018. Yes, Mayor, and approve them. There's a motion, is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Next are boards and commissions, mayor's boards and commissions. Is there a motion in favor of mayor's boards and commission? Councilman Stark? Mayor, I move to approve. Second. There is a motion and a second. Mayor, just for the record, the Brian Stark is not my husband, Brian Stark. <laughs> just, just for the record. <laughs> in favor. There, there's a speaker and Aryak, I apologize. Do you want to come forward and provide testimony on this item? My name is Ann Haniak. I'm not really here to speak against this in any way, the appointments, um, but just we have a motion uh, for reconsideration before the Board of Adjustment tomorrow that has specific, very specific voting rights and don't know how this would affect those. And so we would just appreciate at some point in time somebody telling us how it would affect it, whatever motion, whatever action you take, because otherwise we're gonna be put in a situation of having to file a lawsuit, which we would prefer not to file. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. And then uh, in favor, Helen Hauser, not wishing to speak. I don't know if there's a favor of the motion. The motion was in favor of the mayor's boards and commissions. There's Mayor? Oh. Councilman, please. I'd like to put a secondary motion to continue this item until June 6th. All right, so there's a motion to continue. There is a second on the motion to continue. Uh, do you have any feelings about the motion to continue the, uh, the item? I guess a question from Ms. Uh, uh, Ann, excuse me, uh, Hanyak, I believe, would be how that would impact it. I guess someone maybe from planning department could talk about the uh, issues depending on whether it passes or, um, uh, or not. Okay, so the motion is to con I'm okay. What's that? No, I appreciate that very much. I just want to see if they want to change your testimony. And we'll, I think the question was, how this might affect an ongoing case. We're gonna have the planning department uh, maybe talk to you about afterwards about uh, process, not right now, but at the, uh, depending on what happens. Councilwoman Pastor, please. I have a question regarding her question in the sense of uh, if new members are placed on the Board of Adjustments today, there's a meeting tomorrow. Do the remaining or the, those that are on the Board of Adjustments today, will they hear the case and then the new ones step in at the next meeting or how does that work? Mr. Stevenson, our, pl our planning director, Alan Stevenson. Mayor, Councilwoman Pastor, uh, in this case, if there are new members that are appointed today by the mayor and council, any reconsideration request that would be heard by the board tomorrow would have to be decided by the existing members that heard the case previously. So whatever number of them are left, uh, they would be the ones to decide whether or not a reconsideration uh, could be granted. If they, uh, three of them, if all four were, were approved, those three that were, remain, if a majority of them said yes, it would be able to be reconsidered, it will be scheduled for a full public hearing and discussion about the merits of the case at the following month, and at that time, the full new members would be allowed to take part in that discussion. Okay. Any other questions? So the motion is to continue. Mayor, can I make, may I make a comment on that? Councilman DeCicio, please. And why am I, and this is to the members that are here today. There has been this innuendo, and you would not want yourselves to be treated the way some of these board members are being treated today. So there's been innuendo around this board that they've done things wrong, that they didn't like it. We, this is the first time that I've ever seen a citizen's group collectively being attacked by a law firm in the city of Phoenix. So just to give you a history of what's been occurring here at the city, 
It's been one personal attack after another. Instead of talking about the merits of cases, what we're starting to see more and more, and we saw it earlier with a Trammell Crow case, and then we saw it with a, uh, a towing contract, and we've seen it repeatedly, that is now these innuendos that somebody is doing something wrong, but they don't talk about the case. They don't talk about the, uh, the project itself. So one entity, one group, who represents one um, client, has literally laid out a foundation that somehow or another these board members did something wrong in the past. It's just beyond uh, acceptable anymore. I no longer am going to take this. I think it's wrong. I think it's wrong for the city of Phoenix to allow it. I mean, it's a rewarding of bad behavior. I met with uh, Craig Stebley today, Mayor. He's the Neighborhood Association president, the largest one in my district from Arcadia. I asked him, I said, hey, Craig, what are you, what are you hearing? He goes, oh, we're hearing a lot. We're hearing that this is a takeover by one lawyer trying to take over the board. So I'm, and all this is occurring because of the way this thing was handled. I think there needs to be a time, a cooling down period of a period of two weeks or so, let this thing cool down and figure it out. But at the end of the day, neither, no one here would want to be treated the same way. You would not want to be treated like some of these board members are being treated right now. So I'm gonna vote for the continuance. My preference would be to just turn this thing down at this point. But I'll vote for it because it'll allow time to cool down and allow things to work out. Thank you, Mayor. All right, uh, thank you very much. May, may I point out, this has nothing to do with you. I know most of you guys pretty well, and I just really appreciate all the work that you do, but it has nothing to do with you, and my vote today has absolutely nothing to do with anything that you've done or anything else. It's the way this has been handled and the innuendo around some of these board members that have done an exemplary job for the city of Phoenix. All right, uh, uh, thank you very much. Um, just in response, I can only say that, uh, uh, you know, I've, I've obviously asked these uh, citizens who have impeccable uh, reputations to serve um, to um, on the Board of Adjustment to replace people who are serving on expired terms. Uh, there were four people on expired terms, and I've asked these outstanding people uh, to serve. They're my requests. Uh, they're the people that I have asked to do it, and uh, no one else asked me to, to uh, ask them to serve. It was my request that these individuals, who I've known for a long period of time, uh, serve on this incredibly important uh, board. Other uh, comments or questions as it relates to the continuance? And just, uh, Mayor, Doesn't. was the motion to continue all the boards, like the Sister City Commission and Human Relations Commission, or just one board? I just think we should just do it all, personally. I mean, there were a lot feel, of people who came you, down here today. And well, would you feel more comfortable with one board? I'm fine with, I'd rather just do the whole thing at this point. Okay, so the motion is to continue. There is a uh, second. Um, I will be opposing the motion. I think this is, you know, we're asking these outstanding people to serve on this very important uh, board. Again, it's my request. I picked the people that I thought would serve well, very, very uh, uh, carefully. And um, I think that uh, the opportunity to, to get them serving as soon as possible is, um, is the right thing in light of uh, their willingness to serve the people of Phoenix. Councilwoman, please. I just need to get some clarity because of, uh, I guess, a number of dynamics and emails that I've been receiving. Um, my understanding is the Board of Adjustment, uh, the people that were sitting on the Board of Adjustment were sitting on an expired uh, term. Am I wrong on that or am I, I just need clarity. Mayor, uh, Councilwoman uh, Pastor, three of the four were on expired terms. There was one who uh, is not, but she was looking to step down anyways because she has some other obligations. Okay, so three out of the four were sitting on an expired term. For how long were they sitting on an expired term? They, I don't have the exact dates in front of me, but I'll get that. It's been, it's been a, a while. One month, two months, no, six it's to been, nine months. It's been longer than that. I'll get you the, the okay. exact dates here in just a minute. Okay, so three of them were sitting on an expired term. So in my research and understanding that you have the ability to uh, uh, name new members to the Board of Adjustment, they were sitting on expired terms, and uh, that's what I understand. I haven't talked to anybody, so I'm trying to get this clear. My understanding is that's how 
things came about. Um, however, um, I understand how this move came about. Uh, I do believe in the future uh, and boards and commissions to at least contact uh, contact those that are sitting on the board, uh, at least by phone, and have a conversation as to what the dialogue or why things are happening the way they are. Um, I do know that they received a letter, uh, but an email. I'm not sure the time frame, but that's what I understand. I think as uh, generally accurate, um, under our city council rules, the mayor has the opportunity to recommend appointments to uh, boards and commissions. Uh, only, obviously, those people only take their seat with the support of the uh, city council, so it is with the consent of the city council. But the mayor has the opportunity to recommend those uh, uh, boards and commissions if someone is serving on an expired term. And that's the, that, those are the circumstances, at least as, as it relates to the board of adjustment. Um, there were uh, numerous people who did have expired terms, and so I made these recommendations of these outstanding people here today. Vice Mayor, please. Uh, I, I'm supporting the motion for continuance, and it has absolutely nothing to do with who's nominating for these positions. It's how the process is going, and I have real reservations on what's happening around here, and we need more information. Uh, I'm very concerned. I want to make sure that everything is above board. It's what's best for the city, and please don't take this personal. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mayor. Councilman, please. Alan, so how many people do we have on the board of adjustments? Mayor, Councilman Okowski, it's a seven-member board. And it's down to how many members now? Uh, right now, it is down to, uh, well, they have seven members currently on that board. So it, if four were replaced, there would be four, there'd be three existing ones. And those three existing ones would be, who are they? Uh, they are uh, Brian Jeffries. Um, oh, yes, Tim Igo was recently appointed, uh, as well as... Steve Berline, the wrong sheet in front of me. Here we go. Additional questions, I apologize. Okay, any additional comments or questions? All right, so the motion on the table is to continue uh, all of the boards and commissions. There has been a second for uh, any other comments by members of this council. All right, well, I guess we'll do roll call, yeah. Okay, uh, so a yes vote would be to continue, a no vote would be not to continue and have the vote on the boards and commissions here today. Roll call. DeCicio. Yes. Gallego. No. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. No. Stark. No. Valenzuela. No. Waring. Yes. Williams. Yes. Mayor Stanton. No. Mayor, I want to change my vote to uh, no. I'm allowed to do it before the gavel hits. I want to change it to no, Mayor. So, Mayor, under the Roberts Rules of Order, um, the vote's final when it's declared by the mayor. <laughs> oh, it hasn't been declared yet, so technically I think Councilman DeCicio could change his vote. Okay, I so will be reconsidering this. Okay, I'm not sure procedure. I just want to make sure everyone knows what I do, because yeah. I'm pretty direct. You are no, direct. Procedural motion couldn't be reconsidered. <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, the Councilman DeCicio's motion to continue fails on a 6-3 vote. So now the motion on the table is to support the, board, the mayor's boards and commissions. Was there a second on, there was a second on that motion. Any comments on that item? Okay, we'll do a roll call as well. DeCicio. Uh, Mayor, I'm gonna be supporting this because I'm going to be reconsidering it. And thank you, Mayor, so I'm gonna vote yes. Thank you. Gallego. Yes. Nowakowski. No. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Waring. Yes. Williams. No. Mayor Stanton. Yes, so the motion passes Seven to two, noting that Councilman uh, DeCicio indicated he's voting yes 
uh, to preserve the opportunity to file a motion for reconsideration. Now, there's a, is there a motion on city council, boards, and commission nominations? Move approval. Second. There's a motion. There is a second. Any comments on the city council, boards, and commission nominations? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That passes unanimously. We have many, many outstanding citizens here to be sworn in here today, so I'll come down to the floor and swear in uh, these folks, and then afterwards, please come behind the dais so the individual council members can say thank you for your service, noting that any no vote was not personal to anyone here. It was more of a concern about other issues. Oh, you have, I'm sorry. No. To continue. This last one, the council's board. All right. I please, or please raise your right hand. Excuse me. Please raise your right hand. I and state your name. Thank you. No. We got Do that. solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution and laws of the state of Arizona, and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and defend them against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of the office of According to the best of my ability, so help me God. Thanks in advance for your service. That's great. Good to see you, Dwayne. We are now to liquor licenses, uh, 4 through 24, and I don't believe there are any cards, are there? No. They're all in support? Okay, do I have a motion to approve items 4 through 24? So moved. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Hearing no further discussion, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Motion carries. All right, now uh, we are to items 25 through 101, ex Except the following, 41 to 43, 60, 72, 74, 99, 101, and I believe their items 30 and 98 have been withdrawn, and there are public comment cards for 60 and 97. Second. Oh, 99 through 101. Okay. So second. D did you make the motion to approve? I thought you were reading, you, you. No, well, okay, I make, the 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 I make the motion. You second it. I'll second. <laughs> there is a motion and a second on liquor, these are liquor lights, liquor lights application. Oh, the omnibus. Omnibus, excuse me. Uh, on the omnibus uh, motion, any comments or questions? Roll call. DeCicio. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Valenzuela. Yes. Waring. Williams. Yes. Mayor Stanton. Yes. Next item. 
Forty-one. Forty-one. I would um, move approval. Forty-one is a call for the August twentieth, two thousand eighteen special election. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. There is a second. Any? Are there any cards in the item? Any comments or questions? Oh, there may be some cards. Mr. Leonard Clark. Hello, uh, thank you, Mayor and Council. My name is Leonard Clark. Uh, I just wanted to come back and comment on this. It's been a long time, and before the mayor leaves for Washington, I just wanted to say I really applaud your efforts in trying to, uh, you know, make our elective process, our election process, much smoother and working with Maricopa County recorder Adrian Fontes. Uh, I just encourage all my fellow citizens, Republicans, Democrats, Independents, let's not forget that we still have something left of a constitutional democracy, and if we don't use it, we're going to lose it. I strongly encourage all of them to vote. Thank you for letting me speak, and if I don't see the mayor again, good luck in Washington, D.C., if that's where you're headed. Bye-bye. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Leonard Clark. Obviously, I hope to see you many, many times in the future. Good to see you. All right, there's a motion and a second. That's 42. Uh, any comments from members of the council? Roll call. DeCicio? Yes. Gallego? Yes. Nowakowski? Yes. Pastor? Stark? Yes. Valenzuela? Waring? Yes. Williams? Yes. Mayor Stanton? Yes, that item passes unanimously. So now we're on item 42, and nice. item 42 concerns a proposed form of the ballot for August 28, 2018. And I sh would like to be able to describe what happens if a vote is not unanimous on any of these individual proposition proposals, but I will likely blow it. So Tony, maybe I turn it to you or Chris, just so for folks at home watching, understand what happens. Number one, if these pass, and two, but if it passes with less than a unanimous vote, because there are important ballot implications before we begin voting on the individual proposed propositions. I don't know if it's Tony or Chris, whoever. Sure, thank you. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council members. With me today are Chris Meyer from the City Clerk Department and also Derek Lavelle from the Law Department. To specifically answer your question, if any of the ballot propositions that are proposed do not pass with a unanimous vote, there's a charter amendment that requires the full text to be included on the ballot. There was a situation a few years ago with the transit proposition where that occurred. So it just would be longer text that has to inc be included on the ballot. And just a reminder as well, Maricopa County would be conducting this election for the city of Phoenix. So we're working very closely with them on the positions and the form of the ballot. And it's just important to note that depending on the number that may pass with less than unanimous, some then may fall to the November ballot because they would simply run out of space on a August Ballot. We don't know which ones because they'll have to obviously work with and I guess negotiate somewhat with the county. Uh, but I just want to make sure folks are aware of that, uh, both on the dais and at home, uh, de so depending on what occurs on those. So they can consider that as they vote on the various proposals. Okay, so 42 is the item on the agenda right now. Uh, the first one will concern the form of the ballot for consolidated elections, a much debated topic before the city council uh, at a recent meeting. Is there a motion on Prop 101, form of the ballot? I Mayor, move oh, oh. we're gonna have a race. Oh, you yeah, go I ahead. Move <laughs> approval of Prop 101. And I'll second. Is that the proper motion? Uh, to approve the language as proposed. Okay, so approve this is the language, language as, as proposed. proposed. Okay, uh, so there's a motion on Prop 101 proposed ballot language. There's a second. Leonard, did you have general comments or did you want to comment on a particular proposition? Leonard Clark, where I are you? He left. Did I lost him? Oh, darn it. All right. Uh, he was neutral. Okay. Are there any comments on 101 at this time as it relates to form of the ballot? Councilman Valenzuela, you have comments? Yeah, Mayor, I'm Please. gonna I'm gonna be voting no stay consistent on this topic. I sincerely 
believe this is not the, the right thing to do for our city. Uh, you, you, you said it yourself, it was a much debated topic. I, I, I really don't believe that it, uh, this topic was properly vetted in the community and uh, just fundamentally allowing for more partisanship in local elections by moving these elections to, to consolidate, I, I just think, I think it's a mistake. Uh, this is something, this is a, a lawsuit that we won just a few years ago and, uh, and I supported that action. We won, we stayed put, we continued on local control, uh, uh, having our, our local uh, elections and I just, I don't, I don't think it's a good idea to just cough the ball up, if you will, and you know, uh, uh, ask for for the for the consolidation. So, I, I just think it's a it's a mistake. Again, uh, I I see DC style politics working its way, making its way into local government here in the city of Phoenix, and I think that's a mistake. Again, I, I've been out on front on this one, and uh, and I have to stay consistent. I'll be voting no. Okay, uh, any other comments by members of the council on Proposition 101? If not, roll call. Vizicio? Yes. Gallego? Yes. Nowakowski? Yes. Pastor? No. Stark? Yes. Valenzuela? No. Waring? Williams? Yes. Mayor Stanton? Yes, so that item passes seven to two. Next is, is the proposed form of the ballot for Proposition 102. We, I think we did receive additional information on that, so maybe our city attorney has some additional information on the staff proposed form of the ballot language. I do, Mayor, members of the council. Thank you for the opportunity to clarify. Uh, Mayor, members of the council, the law department misinterpreted uh, motions made in the subcommittee and policy. We interpreted them broad, more broadly than the discussion supported, so consequently we would propose that the language for Proposition 102 be changed to the following. If I may, I'd like to read that into the record. Please. Proposition, here's the title, Proposition 102, dash power of city council to remove elective office holders, end of the title. And the language then is, shall chapter 17 of the charter of the city of Phoenix be amended as described to permit removal of a council member for a violation of the city of Phoenix non-discrimination and anti-harassment policy. That's the end of the language. This um, language, if approved as proposed today would also constitute an amendment of the original ordinance previously passed by council. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Any questions as to that clarification? No. I think it is consistent with past actions by this council. And I think it was, uh, I appreciate your acknowledgement of a, a good faith but uh, mistake and, and we picked it up and uh, clarified that mistake. Okay. okay, so now on Proposition 102. Mayor, I. Personally disagree with this, but I believe the voters should have the last say. I move uh, to approve the language as, as proposed or read on Prop 102. As it, proposed and amended? Yes. Woman? Yes. Okay. Second. There's a motion and a second on Proposition 102. Mayor. Councilman, please. Just a quick question, clarification. Is this the language that's specific to just dis discrimination or everything else? It just, it's the new language, correct? Mm -hmm. Mayor, Councilman DeCicio, correct. Just okay. specific to the um, non-discrimination and anti-harassment policy, which is essentially the sexual discrimination policy. I'm good with that. Thank you, Mayor. Any additional comments at this time? Councilman, please. Thank you. I wanna th uh, thank the council for continuing to move this forward. We unanimously approved it, and it's very important giving both our national and local conversation. We today will ask the voters to help us end a double standard for elected officials. If any city employee, including an elected official, commits harassment, your job should be at risk. Today we're sending a firm statement that we want to stand up for victims, that what happened at the state capitol should never happen at the Phoenix City Council. I want to thank all of my colleagues, but uh, particularly Councilman Jim Waring, for helping work on this important issue, as well as the many stakeholders, such as the Phoenix Women's Commission, the Arizona Coalition Against Sexual and Domestic Violence that helped draft this ordinance. I think the voters will be very enthusiastic about passing it. All right, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I did get uh, communication from Jody Liggett, head of the Women's Commission, very much in favor of it. She just was not able to be here today. Councilman Waring, please. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate that kind remark from Councilman Gallego. This is, this is her doing. Um, 
whatever credit is due, she, she solely deserves it, but uh, I was happy to add a couple things here and there. I'm happy we got uh, the change made that I think is appropriate and reflects what we talked about in subcommittee uh, and happy to support it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Here. Other comments, please, Councilman? Just to a congratulatory tone and uh, comment to Councilwoman Gallego and Jim Waring. Uh, they actually worked, Jim was being very gracious here. He did work on it and it was very bipartisan. Uh, it was meant to happen, it should happen in the city of Phoenix and I just wanna thank the Councilwoman and Councilman uh, Waring for bringing this forward and basically you're changing a dynamic here and a culture here at the city and throughout and I think it's gonna serve as a great example for the rest of the, you know, for basically the rest of the state. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you so much. Additional comments by members of this council? Councilwoman? I don't, I mean, I think it's a good idea, but I don't think the culture is here. So um, I'm glad that we have this uh, going to the voters for them to vote for this, but I believe every one of, uh, one of our colleagues is, uh, uh, know, their, their, know their lane and don't disrespect or harass anybody. I'd be surprised. Thank you very much. Any additional uh, comments? And Mayor, pardon yes, me, Mayor, if I may Ms. add Macron, one thing. Yes. In addition to the uh, proposal where it's the approval of the form of the ballot, we also needed to add to the motion to refer Proposition 102 as amended. Okay. Uh, sure, that's what I said. The thank motion you. of the thank maker you. assents to that language. That, the that is second. what I seconded. Excellent. All right. Roll call. DeCicio? Yes. Gallego? Yes. Nowakowski? Pastor? Yes. Stark? Yes. Valenzuela? Yes. Waring? Yes. Williams? Yes. Mayor Stanton? Yes. So Proposition 102, form of the ballot language, passes unanimously. Next, Proposition 103, the proposed Southwest Gas Franchise Agreement. Do we have a motion on 103? I would move uh, to approve staff's language uh, to uh, this agreement. I'll second. There's a motion, there's a second. Any comments on Proposition 103, form of the ballot language? Roll call. DeCicio? Yes. Gallego? Yes. Nowakowski? Yes. Pastor? Yes. Stark? Yes. Valenzuela? Yes. Waring? Yes. Williams? Yes. Mayor Stanton? Yes, so Proposition 103, form of the ballot, passes unanimously. Proposition 104, form of the ballot language, is there a motion? I would move staff's recommended language. Second. Uh, there's a motion, there is a second. Any comments on Proposition 104? Roll call. DeCicio? Yes. Gallego? Yes. Nowakowski? Yes. Pastor? Yes. Stark? Yes. Valenzuela? Yes. Waring? Yes. Williams? Yes. Mayor Stanton? Yes. Uh, Proposition 105 is the Citizen Commission on Salaries for Elected Officials these are more of a technical uh, change because of uh, if, assuming consolidated elections passes. Mayor, yes, uh, Tony or Chris can explain the reason for that. Uh. Mayor, members of the council, yes. If, if the dates of the election change to the even year, currently the salary commission would meet at the beginning of odd years to refer something to the ballot in the fall of odd years. This proposition would move the appointment of that salary commission to even years so that they would be making the recommendation in the spring and then go on the ballot in the fall. It also is implementing a recommendation from the salary commission from the last time they met that we reduce the frequency of that commission's appointment <coughs> from two years to four years and that it be aligned with the elections for mayor. Okay, uh, so that is recommended. Cou uh, Councilman? Can you explain to me what the Citizens Commission on Salaries for Elected Officials so that the public understands what the commission does and why we're moving it? I, there could be a perception that we're voting on uh, us wanting to raise our salaries, so. Yes, Mayor, Councilman Pastor, the city charter um, contains a provision for adjusting the salaries of the mayor and council via appointment of a citizen's commission. They review the salaries of other cities and towns and elected officials, and then they make a recommendation that's filed directly with the city clerk as to the salary, whether to increase it, decrease it, leave it unchanged. That then goes on to the ballot, so the council has no involvement in, in setting their own salaries. 
this proposition is simply moving the time for the appointment of that commission, which is required by the charter, from happening every two years to every four years and in even years instead of odd years. Excellent. So if successful, they can recommend no salary increase every four years instead of recommending no salary increase every two years. Excellent. Huh? <laughs> All right. I'm here with, with. <laughs> All right. Is there, well, they had a motion to the second. Any additional comments or questions on that item? Roll call. DeCicio? Yes. Gallego? Yes. Nowakowski? Yes. Pastor? Stark? Yes. Valenzuela? Yes. Waring? Yes. Williams? Yes. Mayor Stanton? Yes. That item passes unanimously. Next item is item 106, random sample verification for initiative referendum. Uh, I'll ask to see if there's a motion a second. Assuming that it does have a motion second, maybe Chris could explain the difference between current policy versus what's going to go on the ballot if passed, what would change. Is there a motion on 106? Move approval. There's a motion and a second in favor of the staff recommended language on 106. Chris, what's the difference between what we do now versus a proposed random sample? Mayor, members of the council, currently the charter requires that when an initiative or referendum petition is filed, we check 100% of the signatures. Um, state law, on the contrary, checks only a random sample of 5%. So a state initiative is filed, only 5% of those signatures, which is st statistically significant, um, is checked, and then the petition is certified based on that 5%. This was a recommendation from the core study a few years ago and looking at charter amendments that we look at reducing this, um, both because of time and the ability to do it, particularly when we're consulting elections and trying to get things onto the ballot with the county in the fall, we needed to be able to expedite that. It takes longer to check 100% than to check the random sample of 20%. Staff recommended 20% rather than the 5% so that we have a much higher, really beyond question, random sample that the petition is as we certify it to be. Thank you very much. Any comments or questions on that? All right. Roll call. DeCicio? Yes. Gallego? Yes. Nowakowski? Yes. Pastor? Yes. Stark? Yes. Valenzuela? Waring? Uh, I, I didn't vote, but I, I'm gonna, um, Again, this has to do, this is one of the changes that would have to made, be made because of the consolidated elections item. Is that correct? Uh, Mayor, Council Donzuela, this is not something that has to be changed as a result of consolidated elections. It was something that had been proposed previously. We timed it now because obviously when we're having elections and when they occur might affect this, but no, this does not have to be done, is not affected directly by the uh, consolidation of elections. Okay, well that, that said, with that clarification, I'll vote yes. Waring? Yes. Williams? Yes. Mayor Stanton? Yes, so I believe that one passed unanimously as well. So I think only one of the propositions did not pass unanimously, so that will be the only one that has to have the full language uh, on the ballot. That's correct, Mayor. Excellent. All right, now move forward with our... And so there's one more item related um, to the uh, elections items, and that's item 43. That simply is stating that Maricopa County will be conducting the election for the city. And I move approval. There's a motion and a second that the August election, will, uh, if approved, will be held by Maricopa County. Any comments on that? Roll call. Cicio. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Waring. He would vote yes. No. <laughs> Will uh, Williams. Does not. Yes. Surprise. Mayor Stanton. Yes. All right. So that passed unanimously, eight to zero. Councilman Stark, you cannot vote for Councilman Waring, even though you may know how he would have voted, but you cannot actually vote for another council member. Okay. It says, it says half the amount, half of this amount will be paid for by Southwest Gas Corporation. <laughs> All right, next item on the agenda is item number uh, 60. This concerns whether this city council will refer to the ballot a proposed charter amendment as it relates to election funding disclosure, or as I call it, many others call it a dark money uh, initiative or uh, referral here from the city of Phoenix. And when, this wasn't on the list, Mayor, so does this go to a 
different time. Okay, May so if Mayor passes, if this were to pass here today, Tony, what would happen? Mayor and Vice Mayor, that is correct. The council had directed staff to bring this forward for the November ballot. Okay, move approval. Wow. Second. There is a motion and a second. Are there any cards on item number 60? Yep. Do you have a question? I apologize. I do. Please, Councilman, go ahead. Tony, uh, I know that we voted on it to go on the November ballot. Is there any way of putting it on the August ballot? I mean, would we have to take up another vote, or how would that work? Mayor and Councilwoman Pastor, we certainly can ask the county. Okay. Um, the way that the ballot is looking right now, particularly because the one item didn't pass with a unanimous vote, which means that the full text needs to be on for okay. the consolidated elections okay. item. Got it. There most likely will not be enough you. space. Yeah. Okay. But we I, certainly I, will ask them. Chris is in dialogue with them daily. Okay. I'm just asking only because it could save us more money, and you know, uh, we would like to do that for our taxpayers. Uh, the second. Second question, I just lost it as I was talking. Um, the second question, I guess, would check to see if there, if we could put it on the ballot only because of room. And that's what I'm assuming that's what we were thinking. Yes, Councilwoman Pastor, we will certainly look into that. Okay, thank you. Mayor? May I? I, I Council DeCicio, you had a question, please. Of all the items, including this one, uh, that were approved to go on the August ballot, because the number one issue that I've heard from many up here was that they want to protect the right of independents to have that ability to vote. All those items that we've put on the August ballot, are independents going to vote on that? I mean, does the Pebble List go out to every single independent? Because that is what this city has made a priority to make sure independents vote on. Mayor, Councilman DeCicio, for an August primary election ballot, independents are eligible to vote, but they will not automatically receive their ballot because of the party issue. They have to identify which party they want. You're right. And so that means the whole argument about making sure people have the right to vote that independents have that ability to be nonpartisan because the only way they can do this, oh, correct me if I'm wrong, if you want to vote as an independent in the primary, uh, primary election, you have to either say you want a Republican or a Democrat ballot, correct? Yes. Mayor, Councilman DCCO, <laughs> you have to indicate either a party, it could be Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, any other recognized party, or in Maricopa County and now in <laughs> state law, you can also select a nonpartisan or city ballot. So yeah, if you, you don't want to vote in a party primary, you can request the ballot that has all of the other things on it, but not the party. But you still have to make that request. Sure, and then what percentage of the uh, individuals have been doing that? About 10%, I think it is, of independents? Mayor, Councilman DCCO, for a county election, for the county elections, it's been 15 to 20 percent of those voters request the ballot. In City of Phoenix elections, we mail the ballots out to all of the ind independents, but about 20 to 25 percent of them have been returning those ballots. So then this is just, just more of a comment. Then everybody that voted for these August elections, or for placing these things on the August ballot, even though, and I just want to make sure that the public understands what just occurred up here, is that <laughs> Certain individuals up on this council have said that we've got to make sure we preserve the rights of independents to vote, have actually placed some of these items on the ballot for August when Republicans and Democrats primarily vote. And the by far majority of independents have been excluded. So I just want you to remember what just occurred here today and what is actually happening because I would assume that there would have been consistency in protecting those independents, and I don't think that that's happening. I'm going to be voting against this measure anyways for other reasons, but I just want to let you know what's happening. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. Councilman, please. I don't even know how to even begin this conversation, uh, only because that is, that's been one of the arguments uh, or discussions or dialogues up, up, at, up here in the fact of wanting to make sure uh, we were inclusive 
of everybody being able to vote. And in addition to that, also wanting to turn uh, the voter turnout. Um, so I guess my question is, on the items that we just voted on, is it possible, I know we'll have to take a, probably a reconsideration, it would be, this would be a Brad uh, question, in the sense of uh, the items that we just voted on, if we want to move them to November, um, then do we do a reconsideration, or what's the process? So, <clears throat> Mayor, members of council, um, on an or when an ordinance has been voted on, there cannot be a motion for reconsideration for at least 24 hours. So with respect okay. to those matters, since they were by ordinance, they can't be reconsidered at this meeting. I know, but what, that, that's my question. So then in 24 hours, there could be, someone could place a, a, an item or items for reconsideration. Somebody could make a motion, yes. Yes, okay, thank you. You have to be on the winning side though. Correct. 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 You're absolutely right. You want to change your vote because we have to go back and do it now so you can just preserve the right to reconsider. I'm, I'm so which as item? To, to the matters that you've declared, those are final for this meeting, Mayor. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. So we can't do that today. Like on which item? Because I voted differently on each item. Okay. Um, are there uh, comments oh, or? Uh, I, I think. I guess I have a I, I, you know, I'm just for, for what it's worth. My preference is November 2. I think there was practical considerations, and that was really the issue, is that we won't be able to get all these items on. The, so if we want the opportunity to vote on them, we have to, in good faith, try to divide them up between August, and there's a lot of items that we're, at, we're asking our voters to vote on. If we want them to vote on it this election cycle, as a practical matter, we can't do it. My own personal opinion is, the more on November, the better, uh, you know, because, with their, because of the for exact reasons that were being uh, addressed. But otherwise, if we don't get them to November, we'd have to pay for a special election at a later time. Um, and I don't, I'm, I'm assuming that nobody on this council would prefer to, that option. Well, my, my issue is uh, disenfranchising some voters uh, that would normally vote in a city election. And uh, having an August election, is an extra step for those that are independents and then have to choose a party uh, to then decide which ballot they want. So uh, it's been very, this, this is actually very uh, revealing to me at this moment um, that we, we've just now placed a group of voters uh, in a uh, very awkward situation and have chosen to uh, exclude them, so. Well, I think Chris has a question, maybe on the issue of the practicality. Mayor, members of the council, yes, the, the issue with the items going on the August ballot is because um, the best information the county can provide is that there would have only been room for maybe two to four items on the November ballot, and it would have only been the short tagline, 50-word description. Um, in the interest of having this completed and the election consolidation items and all and these items completed either by the end of the year because they're required to be like the franchise agreement or in order to move our elections in 2019 implement the dark money etc the option to get them done this year would be to put them on the August ballot and that's that's why um, documents were prepared based on the council direction for the August ballot if if they were moved to November they could be moved but um, a large number or most of them would not appear and certainly Prop 101, which the election consolidation, which did not pass with um, a, a unanimous vote, would not be able to go on the November ballot in the, in the required form. Well, my, you know, my feeling is we should probably get as many items on the November out right. as possible. And we rank them. Does anyone on this council disagree with the proposition that the second choice should be August as opposed to a special election that would be paid for 100% by the city of Phoenix? Does anyone disagree with that proposition? Or would you prefer a special election rather than an August election 
uh, for uh, for items that can't make it onto the. Oh, sorry, Chris, please. I'm sorry, Mayor. Just for clarification, what when we would we be talking time. about having the this election? If we're if we're not doing August, what date are we talking about for an election? Well, I'm assuming if the the, the policy of this council were to be to have a special election rather than an August election. That's not my, my first preference is November. Second preference is August. Third would be a special election paid exclusively by the city of Phoenix. But I may be in the minority on that position on the city council based upon uh, what pe people are saying now. That would probably have to be not until 2019. I'm quite confident you are not in the minority on that, that we want. Why, that's why I asked. Uh, Minority I, mean, I think what? some people are trying to make a point, and I appreciate the point that's being made, but I think, the, 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 frankly, the counterpoint is that as a practical, November is our first choice on all of it, but as a practical matter, we're not going to be able to get it all on the ballot, so it's not a policy choice to do in, in August. It's a, as a practical matter, we don't have any other choice. If we had the choice, I'd prefer oh. to have it all on, uh, uh, on the November uh, ballot. Mayor, members of the council, um, that, is, that is correct. Now, as far as a special election, there's only four dates a year in which we're allowed to do that. One is in August, one is in November. The next after that would be March of 2019 or May of 2019. But as, as I said, although the items wouldn't fit on the ballot, most likely in November, um, Prop 101, the consolidation matter, would, n would surely not fit. It, it cannot go on the November ballot. There is no room for it with full text. So that would have to go to a special election in March, which is then realistically too late for the election in 2019 to be consolidated to 2020. Okay. Mayor? Councilman, please. No, I did it just to point out, one, the hypocrisy of politics, but also the kind of the Hobson's choice here. I, I think I knew most of these answers anyways. It's just the fact that it was drilled in repeatedly that the protection of independence was critical, and here it is, the council votes to take away the rights of independence. I just think this is gonna be an interesting dilemma for individuals. I'm fine with whatever the council chooses. I'm good with a March election, or if you wanna do it in November, I'm good with that too. You guys make the decision on that. Um, you figure it out. I'm good. Thank you, Mayor. All right, so Councilman DeCicio is good uh, keeping the policy as proposed. Is any is anyone as council not good uh, with th Mayor, that? Um, please. It just clarifying questions. I no one's voted on anything yet, and and I, I think these are I think these are some clarifying questions. And you probably have your email three quarters of the way written, Sal. But but no, we we have not voted on. Okay, it's on uh, I and. Mayor, you're, you're talking about a, you know, November or a special election. I don't think we're there yet. I think, I think, I think Laura just asked, uh, Councilwoman Pastor just asked a question. You know, is this something that could be that we can fit into the August ballot? You know, and remember. because because the original question on the item is, you know, or does this council support this to go to the November ballot? The question came up. I think it's a valid question. This is an important topic. I think I think. I would imagine everyone up here is going to support this topic, but it's so important that it's, I think it's a valid question, right? Should we bring it in for August? I think it's a fair question. That's what I heard. So suddenly this turns into this whole thing about not, you know, including a certain sector of voters or is the city going to pay for a special election and, or so on. I, I think that, I think uh, uh, if we can just have a conversation, you know, I think there's a reason this is not a, a filled chamber, uh, council chambers for something as important as this. So can we just cut through it for just a moment? And I just I want to ask a couple of questions. So this is a very important topic. I think I would imagine it's going to be supported unanimously. It is so important that I think it's a very valid question of, of uh, uh, having it as, uh, you know, earlier rather than later. There's an August election, there's a November election. Now, Chris, you said that, uh, that it most likely will not fit on the ballot. Uh, so how do we, where do we go from here? I mean, so do we, is this something that gets this item, does it get continued so that you can go ask the county? 
or is this something that you can answer matter-of-factly now that it will not fit on the August ballot, which then now, now all we have is the option of just simply taking November or not, right? Mayor, members of the council, um, we cannot definitively answer whether it will fit because the county doesn't know what else is going to be on the ballot in November. They actually do not know yet what all will be on the ballot in August, which is why we haven't been able to say definitely what will or will not fit. Um, our best guess is that it so. would not fit in August. However, to solve, I think there's an option for the council to solve the dilemma is that you could refer the item to November However, with the, with the contingency that if it would fit in August, that you want to put it in August, or refer it to August, and if it doesn't fit, then it would go on the November ballot. So you could refer it alternatively however we fit. That's essentially what we've done with the ones for August, because we said there's a chance some of them might not fit, and then they would be deferred until November. So if the council were to take one of those options, and for what it's, I mean, I, I don't know how this will work. So let's say the council, votes to do either one of those things uh do you eventually come back and let us know you know how that's going to work and how, and how much advance notice will the public have mayor members of the council yes we would let you know what we're able to fit we should know that um later this later this month toward the end of the month of may whether it was able to fit or not as the county lays out the ballot from all the jurisdictions it's not just the city of phoenix that's working through these items and putting things on the ballot there are other jurisdictions doing the same thing which is why it's it we can't tell anyone definitively what will or will not fit right now chris would you not have to bring back the form of the ballot in two weeks if it was going to be on august can you clarify that please um yes we we the council still would have to refer the form of the ballot so for today is a item. referral you can refer it to august or november if you refer it to august you must next meeting may 16th uh, approve the form of the ballot for it to be able to even be on august correct yes that's correct if you so so there's a time urgency if you in fact want to have something for august but we won't know we won't know whether it can be on August until the county tells us whether there's room. Does that make sense, Councilman? Yeah. Right. And, Other, and uh, just, I had one more question, Mayor. Oh, Councilman, please. Thank you. Uh, this this August election. So the you know we 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 just referred a few of these propositions, uh, and maybe I misunderstood uh, when we were going through a lot of the consolidated elections debate. So. These propositions that we just referred to the ballot, uh, so independents who are pebbled for a city election would, would still have to call and ask for their ballot. This is, they're, they're not going to automatically get their ballot because this is considered a special on our part. Is that correct? Mayor, members of the council, yes. For the county election in August, it is a partisan primary election. Independents will not automatically get a ballot for that election if they are, um, yeah, they have to identify which party they want, which party ballot they wish to receive, or the independent nonpartisan ballot. Okay, Mayor. thank you. Mayor. Oh. Councilman Vice Mayor. Okay, Chris. And Councilman Pastor, and then Councilman okay. Gallego. Vice Mayor. A couple of questions. If we don't do it in August and it gets moved to November, how does that impact the candidates running for mayor? It doesn't. Mayor, um, Vice Mayor Williams, you're talking about candidates running for mayor in the special election nope. for well, a potential vacancy. We're going to have an election the in November. When would it take it, effect? So yeah. who would it affect when yes. it's, if the voters pass it, when does it take effect? Right, because it, it, it's the election that we anticipated being the primaries. We're going to have a, a uh, election in November and we're going to have a one in March. We're still going to have a special election in March. Yeah, but it, it just, if it's not passed till November, yeah, when does it take effect? Mayor, members of the council, if, if election consolidation has passed by before the 2019 scheduled election, then the election would move to 2020. 
However, in order to do that, it has to pass really no later than November because by March, candidates are already circulating petitions and they would have to know when the election is going to be. We don't know what to tell them and it's too late to change for the August or November election in, if we don't get the results about consolidation until after March. Candidates might have to go out and get their signatures and file them and then have to go do it again because the election ends up being a year later instead right. of 2019, which is why the, um, the dark money proposition that we're, would be voted on, on, on 60, if that is on the ballot in August, it could come, become effective in November the yeah. charter amendments have to be approved by the governor. There's not a definite time for when they become effective. It would probably not be effective until after, or at least right at the end, end of the November election. So it would probably, it could, but probably would not apply to a November election, but would take effect somewhere in that cycle and then be effective from there on. So you've come Mayor, close to having me totally council, Vice Mayor still has the floor and then we'll pass it on. Vice Mayor? Uh, well, how much does it cost to have a special election? You run it. Mayor, members of the council, for the city to run a special election, assuming it's not on the same date as a state primary or general election, is about $1.1 million. And what happens if it's on the same date? If we have an election on the same date that the county is having the primary or general, there's a lot more outreach and things that have to be done to inform voters about the confusion between there being two separate elections on the same date, so the cost would go up. Do you have to say specifically what the date is uh, within the month? I mean, if you had it in August but a different date and you ran it, you can't do that. Mayor, Council Williams, no. That was the consolidated election date back in 1996. We can only hold elections on four dates, and two of those dates are the, the August and November dates that are used for the primary in general. Because. It appears then if we want the independents to vote, then it has to be in November. Hmm. Uh, Sal, why didn't you bring this up way back when? Because I didn't even think of it. And I'm knew. a big supporter of making sure that we've gone through this exercise so that the independents do not have to take an extra step and they can vote. Okay. Uh, so now I'll turn over to Council. As it stands now, the vote that we have taken places those items, Propositions 101 through 106, on the August ballot, knowing as a practical matter that some, maybe one or more, may not fit on the August ballot and will have to be shifted to the November ballot. Right now, the item that we're talking about, if passed by the City Council, at least as currently proposed, would be directly referred to the November ballot. I think the, the, that was as a practical matter because we know that there's actually not going to be space on the August uh, ballot. It's more of a practical consideration. Um, and so the key question is, assuming that this passes, uh, is whether or not we want to get all of these propositions voted in the upcoming election cycle, either August or November. My personal preference is November. But we, if we want to ensure that they get a vote, and these are important votes, we have to have them on, spread them out, if you will, between the August and November. As, that is, a, unfortunately, a practical situation that we have to deal with. Councilwoman Pastor and then Councilwoman Stark. I guess one of the, the questions, and um, uh, Vice Mayor uh, Williams asked it, was the cost of the election, because um, What's the cost of shutting out voters in the long run? Because uh, basically that's what we're doing. We're shutting out voters, independents that vote in our city elections. And we have an August election right then and there. We shut them out because we're now asking them to take an extra step. They need to determine what side they want to go on. That's why they're independent. They're independent for a reason. And that's why uh, we had our elections the way they were set up so that everybody, we were more inclusive uh, of having those elections and have everybody participating. So I still don't, I guess I still don't have clarity as to why other than, other than not being able to put the language on a ballot for November, that is the reason why we're, uh, uh, 
we're excluding voters uh, in the sense of putting it in the August election because we have room to put it on a ballot. That's all I'm hearing as, that's how I'm interpreting what is being said to me. So I just need. <laughs> all right, I don't, is it, I don't know if it's really a question for the city clerk, but. I mean. Your recommendation I think is based on the practicality of ballot space, please. Mayor, members of the council, the, the direction that we understood was that the consolidated election and the required items were to go to the voters in order to have the 2019 election moved to 2020. That was the direction. The only way to have that happen is for that election to occur in August or November of 2018. Or November, right? Okay. And the, the issue with, 20, with November was that there was a chance it would not fit on the ballot especially if it was not approved with a unanimous vote, which it was not. So the full text will not fit on the county ballot in November. So if the consolidation item is not on August, then unless there's some other solution found, which we have been looking for one, that item would not be able to go to the voters until March, which means the consolidation then would not occur until after the 2019 election. However, if there is a reconsideration and you had a unanimous vote on the items that you didn't have a unanimous vote, then that the language be, would be shortened. Mayor, members of the council, yes, if there was a unanimous vote, the language okay. would be shortened. It could theoretically, if that was the council's first priority, it could go on a November ballot. Okay. But there are other items then that have to go on a November ballot and some of those not, might not make it. We have the item 60 that we're talking about now. We have the franchise agreement, which has to go before the end of the year, so that would have to go on the okay. November ballot. We have the um, Prop 102 that we talked about for the um, amending the charter removed. So there's four, which already, and there were several others then, but those four already might not fit on a November ballot. The county's best guess is that it's two to four could go on, and they don't know yet how many state measures and other candidates they will have to know how much room would be left for propositions for the city. Okay, and so Chris, as a body, as a council, we then could say we want these following items to go on the ballot in November. Or how? Mayor, members of the council, you can refer the items that we have okay. to the, and do it in priority order, right. but there's not anything we can do to, be ins to ensure that they all make it on that ballot in November. Right, but we could do it in priority order. We're, in, we're insured, so possibly uh, random sample verification may not go on. I don't know how high priority that is, but we can rank. If I mayor can clarify, council? though, the mayor... The mayor and council have already voted Correct. on six and put them in priority order, one through six. That was what the form of the ballot, one through six, just did for August. This item is about the dark money item and whether you want that in August or November. I, I understand that, but I think where, where, where this all came into play was the fact that isn't it interesting that we're voting for the dark money item and putting it in November where we have other items, uh, one through six, that we put in the August election and disenfranchised or alienated uh, independent voters. So that's, that's, I understand what we're voting on, but that's the dialogue so that we can figure out <laughs> where we're going. So I, Thank you. Thank you so much. Councilman Stark. Oh. So a couple of the questions I had, um, Council, uh, Vice Mayor Williams asked, um, but I don't know if this makes, if, if we, if Prop 104 went in August and it passed, would that affect Prop 101 faux text? See what I'm saying? Because that talks about a charter amendment regarding full text. And again, I know, right, right. yeah, but I, I, I get it. I mean, I think the most important thing is the consolidated election and getting the best turnout for that. And thank you, Sal, for pointing that out. But having said that, was that a possibility? If we took Prop 104, if it passed, would that affect 
November and the, the way we do the language? Mayor, Councilwoman Stark, I don't believe it would. The charter amendments to be, even if it was voted on August, has to be approved then by the governor um, before it would be effective. And we would have already had to refer items to the ballot back in July. So the election isn't going to occur um, until after you've already had to refer the items and adopt the form of the ballot. All right, uh, other comments or uh, questions? Councilman DeCicio, please. Mayor, just a couple of points of clarification. So I believe there were five items that were voted on already, is that correct? Six. Six, Mayor and six items. Six. And, and of those six items, how many of those were voted on unanimously five. for August? Councilman DeCicio, five of those. Five of those were done unanimously for an August election that disenfranchises independent voters. So um, the question I've got is so, I, you know, I mean, I'd rather you just be really direct, Chris. Is there like a high probability, and this is my belief uh, with the recorder's office, that all these are not going to fit on the November ballot? Correct? What's your professional judgment on November or August? Which one? November. 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 Mayor, Councilman DeCicio, yes, it is my um, belief and the information I've received from the county is consistent that all of these items would not fit on a November ballot. So, I mean, we can feel pretty comfortable with that. So no matter how we try to wordsmith it, it's still not going to work. It's just, you know, phony baloney stuff. So the question I've got is that when I find it interesting, I would love to see some of these go on the March ballot because then the mayoral candidates would have to literally debate this issue front row, center with the entire public I think that would be fine with me, personally, with a March election. I would love to see this in a March election so that the moral, so the public can actually see and have this debate out there. Because I gotta tell you, I haven't met very few people, and, very, and most people I know, or I talk to, feel very strongly about consolidating elections. Very strongly, so I'd love to see this debate occur. So the options we have are disenfranchised voters in August, uh, put it, try to put it in November when it's not going to happen anyways. Any ballot proposition in November, because then you're going to have to defend that. And then, or move everything to the mayoral election in March. I find this is an interesting discussion. <laughs> Again, I called it a Hobson's decision. Thank you, Mayor. I right, thank you very much. Any additional uh, uh, comments? So the, the actual item that we are discussing discussing right now, although it's taken on twists and turns, as, which is perfectly appropriate, is whether or not we refer to the ballot a charter amendment, which I believe would be, is it exactly what Tempe voters passed recently? Or do we make any changes to uh, the proposal as any changes from what Tempe voters uh, passed by 91%? It is essentially the same as what Tempe um, uh, voters approved. We made some slight adjustments to it that actually broadened what the council could regulate. Okay, um, so that is what we're. That's before this council. There was a motion and a second on that item. I'll now. There's a couple of uh, members of the public who would like to provide testimony. One is in favor. One is neutral. Morgan Dick, please come forward. Great to see you. You were very active in the Tempe effort. Good afternoon. And so you're here in favor of the item, please. Yeah, no, thank you all so much for having me. Um, mayor, council members, my name is Morgan Dick, and I'm here today on behalf of the Arizona Advocacy Network. As the mayor said, we were highly involved with the effort in Tempe. So we're a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization that simply believes in deepening and strengthening Arizona's, Arizona's democracy. And one of the ways I believe we can do that is by mitigating the influence of money in politics, which is exactly what this proposed charter amendment and eventual course ordinance would do. Um, so first of all, I want to thank Councilwoman Gallego, um, Mayor Stanton, and Councilwoman Stark for their leadership and courage on this issue. Um, this exact kind of disclosure that this proposed charter amendment has has widespread bipartisan support, as you all know, but this passed by a margin of nine to one in the city of Tempe just a couple months ago. Um, and so voters clearly know that shining a light on dark money is one of the best ways to protect our local democracy. 
Furthermore, the Supreme Court of the United States explicitly calls on local governments to institute these exact kinds of disclosure requirements and, does, and says that they do not violate the First Amendment. In Citizens United, the Supreme Court expressly affirmed disclosure rules are the appropriate way to balance First Amendment rights with the, do with the rights of donors. Justice Kennedy wrote the following opinion of the court in that case. The First Amendment protects political speech and disclosure permits citizens and shareholders to react to the speech of corporate entities in a proper way. This transparency enables the electorate to make informed decisions and give the proper weight to different speakers and messages. Um, in another Supreme Court, Dover, Supreme Court decision, excuse me, Doe versus Reed, Justice Antonin Scalia said requiring people to stand up in public for their political acts fosters civic courage, without which democracy is doomed. Furthermore, he said, I do not look forward to a society that campaigns anonymously thanks to the decisions of the Supreme Court. Um, so with this potential charter amendment, Phoenix is simply giving voters the opportunity to make more informed decisions, and I happily look forward to working with members of council and staff on uh, moving this ordinance forward. So right. have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you very much for, for being here and your uh, leadership on this issue in Tempe and maybe Phoenix, depending on the outcome of the vote. Sean Severu. Thank you. Please come forward, neutral on the item. Mayor and members of council, um, over the years the Supreme Court has made a number of disastrous decisions, but none so um, harmful as to our political process as Citizens United. Um, so I, I generally applaud any attempt to um, tackle that issue. However, uh, I am a little bit concerned and would like a little bit of clarification if possible regarding the actual penalties. Um, it says here, the verbiage is, entities that are found to be in violation of this policy may be fined up to three times the amount spent on the independent expenditure they failed to disclose. So I mean, that sounds pretty vague to me. Um, so vague it is practically non-existent. So um, I'm not sure if we can uh, talk a little bit or uh, about that. Thank you. Ted, could you uh, explain that, or Brad, or Chris? <laughs> Mayor, Councilman Williams, um, the ordinance, the actual ordinance for this regulation has not yet come to council. Um, what the intent, what has been discussed is the intent would be that a violation um, would follow the same pattern as other violations of campaign finance law, that the presumptive penalty would be equal to the amount that was spent in violation. And if there were mitigating circumstances, it was intentional, it was a large sum of money, whatever the case may be, then it, the penalty could be up to three times the amount that they spent. Do we have further discussion on oh, this? I'm Mayor. not sure where we're going. The, uh, the motion is to support the language that came out of subcommittee and there was a second right now that, that language proposes this goes on the November ballot. Councilman Cecia, please. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I'm just going to make a comment similar to what I gave last time. Of all the people that are on this council up here, I've been the one that the government unions in particular have targeted. They spent over $1.1 million attacking me. They attacked my wife. They attacked my family. This is what the government unions did with all this dark, so supposedly dark money. But you would think I'd be the one supporting this motion here. As much as I despised what they did in attacking somebody's family, I believe that they have a right to do this anonymously. I believe that there's a fundamental right in this country that people can use their voice and they don't have to be able to disclose who they are. I believe that that is a right, a fundamental right within all of us, that we should be protected. And as much as I don't like what they did, as, first of all, I don't think you should ever go after somebody's family. Never, ever. I think that's horrible. But in any respect, they did those things. I still am defending their right to be able to do these things. And I'm going to be voting no on this, which means it would have to go on a November ballot, correct? I vote no because I think one vote, I think you have to be unanimous, correct? This is, um, Mayor, Councilman Susan, this is the vote to refer the item. This isn't the form of the ballot. So right. the vote, whether it's not unanimous, doesn't uh, matter. Well, I thought it item. had to be unanimous in order for it to be a shortened version. That is that's, correct. That's on a vote on the form of the ballot. We're not voting that's on the a form subsequent of the ballot oh, today. That's You're not right. today. That's a subsequent okay, vote. Okay, thank yeah. you, Mayor. 
All right, other members? Councilwoman, please, Gallego. Thank you. Phoenix is responding to a very important issue. The public has demanded more disclosure in our elections, and I'm proud of our city for moving forward with this. I believe it, as Morgan Dick said, it does foster political courage to put your name on it. I believe this will lead to more accurate expenditures. People have to put their name on their information and own it. Hopefully this will lead to a more positive and healthy campaign. And voters can know who is speaking and then prioritize that information accurately. They can understand why someone is speaking, what are their motivations, and we will have better elections. I want to thank uh, Mayor Stanton and Councilwoman Stark for helping bring this forward, as well as um, Azan for being a partner and making sure that we had good information and well-founded legal statutes and uh, legal reasoning to move forward. So um, look forward to moving this item. Thank you so much. Any additional comments by members of the uh, council? Council Valenzuela? Uh, so I'm just, uh, the, is there a motion on the table? There yes, is a motion, the motion right? was then, in favor of the uh, recommendation that came out of the subcommittee. There was a second, and it is essentially what happened, in the, what the citizens of the city of Tempe voted on by 91% just a few weeks ago. Right. Uh, and so the conver most of the conversation has been if, if, if it's possible to move this into August. I think, Chris, you've done a good job of explaining some of that as best as you could, because, I mean, you, you don't have, this is exactly what happens when we put our elections in someone else's hands, frankly. And so we should all get used to this. If, uh, so, uh, the, the item itself, I will just say, I don't think you're gonna see much debate on this. Transparency is a good thing. Uh, it's, it's what we need. Public trust, if we, have, if we don't have public trust in our city, then we are in trouble. And so transparency is a very good thing. Uh, I'm proud of, uh, of the city of Phoenix for uh, being as transparent as we are. I remember when I first got here, and Mayor, you deserve a lot of, a lot of credit for this. this. This meeting is televised right now. It's, you can live stream it. And if you miss it, then you can pull this meeting up, you know, in the middle of the night if you want. And um, the minutes are there, and, uh, and so Julie Waters and her team does a really good job of, of doing those types of things. But transparency is a very, very good thing. And so, uh, so that said, I mean, I, I am 100% uh, behind uh, for this. And I, I, like I said, I, I believe we're probably gonna see unanimous, I would hope we would have a unanimous vote for, for this. Uh, I think the question and the conversation, because I don't want anyone to, to get confused here. I, I, I don't hear anyone saying that they're not for the issue. I hear the question, the debate is, and I think it's more clarification, trying to figure out this is a really important issue. And if it's possible to bring it into an August election and get it done, then we probably should strongly look at that. I think it's definitely worth looking at. Some of this stuff is done hindsight, obviously. We just, you know, voted on something with all of these uh, initiatives. I, th I, I think it would have, I think it would have been a really good idea to prioritize all of these from the very beginning because I think there, if I could pick a couple of these initiatives that that we voted on for August, I don't really see a rush for a couple of them. Put them out to November and pull this one in for August since it is such a high priority. But I don't know what that would entail. I don't know if it means we have to reconsider something. I don't know if the rest of the council will be w willing to have that conversation. Uh, when we get into the discussion on uh, what we allow independents to vote on and what's more important, I, I mean, I, it's a little subjective because I, I think it's, yeah, all of these initiatives are important to someone. And so these initiatives, I think you should, we should be willing to put into August and those can wait till November. I, I just think uh, either way, we can kind of go round and round on that issue. So I think the real question is, for, I, the question is not to support this. I, I believe we should, I feel strongly that we should all support this. I think the question is, uh, how soon can we support this at the ballot? Mayor? Thank you very much. Just Councilman Cicio, additional comments? 
point of clarification with Councilman Valenzuela. Now, you made it really clear in past discussions that you were opposed to an August election because it disenfranchises voters, independent voters, because they don't get ballots. Independent vo voters will not get ballots. And it's a partisan election. And so we're okay now. I just want to make sure we're okay now with August elections. Well, I believe, I'm, we pretty, I'm pretty sure that's what your tweet already says, Sal. So. And it's interesting, it's, it just, it's interesting every five minutes you come in and you reset the table and it's interesting listening to the conversation from your point of view because you always take it somewhere else. Really? You're like, you're often left field and the rest of us are trying to circle the bases. Right field, I'm in so, right field. Aaron, I like to call a question. So, this is getting out of hand. All right, well there, a question has been uh, called. I was gonna make a short statement in favor uh, uh, of it, but the question has been uh, called. I would ask that we just allow me to make that short statement before someone seconds it, but does someone want to second it? I do. Ma Cut me off. All right, darn it. Oh, man, that's, that's hardcore. Stay up fast That's hardcore. Enough. All right. I, I was trying to be uh, generous to everyone, but uh, all right, no problem. So the, the question, so now there has been the, the, the you call the uh, question on this uh, item. Uh, is that a roll call or is that, uh, is that a voice vote? It's been a long time since we've done this. I for, Voice vote for the question. For calling the question. Call for the question. All right, so uh, I, I'll do that's fine with me. Roll call on uh, call for the uh, uh, question. Uh, I prefer just be able to make a short statement, otherwise I'll put something out later. Roll call. DeCicio. Yes. Gallego. No. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. What is it? <laughs> I'm like, what are we? Oh. No. Stark. Yes. Valenzuela. No. Waring. Williams? Yes. Mayor Stanton? Uh, no, and I lost track of the vote, so what, what was the vote on that? All right, 4-4. Four, four. All right, so very quickly, I'll just make my comment, then I don't think there will be any other comments uh, afterwards, but uh, I'm excited to vote in favor of this uh, charter amendment to eliminate dark, dirty money from uh, city elections. Uh, I think it's the right thing to do. It's good for our democracy. It'll make transparency stronger in city elections. Citizen United was a very bad decision by the United States Supreme Court, but one of the things that uh, was stated during Citizen United, as Morgan pointed out, uh, is that the anonymity of money is not, is not necessarily legal in, in uh, elections, and we ought to take a stand on that right here, right now, in the city of Phoenix, that we are going to take a strong stand against dark, dirty money in our city elections, and the city of Tempe voters, as we saw, um, overwhelmingly supported the elimination of dark, dirty money from their campaigns. An overwhelming number of Republicans, an overwhelming number of, Demo of Democrats, an overwhelming number of independents. 91% of voters spoke as loudly as you could possibly speak in an election uh, all, virtually unanimously that this has to be eliminated from their elections and I think it's the right thing to do here in the city of Phoenix and I'll be supporting today's uh, charter amendment. With that, any other comments? Roll call. DeCicio. No. Gallego. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Waring. Williams. Mayor Stanton. Yes. So by a vote of seven to one, the uh, charter amendment uh, passes, and we'll be seeing that on a future agenda with regard to the form of the ballot. All right, next on the agenda, item 72. Item 72 is uh, <coughs> Valley Metro Rail Light Rail Services. Vice Mayor, do a motion on 72? Uh, could I ask if we can move 72 and 74? I move approval of 72 and 74. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any cards in 72 and 74? Comments by Councilman DeCicio, any comments? Just an individual vote? I was going to vote for 74, but not 72, Mayor. No. But I'll, I'll vote against both. That's fine. <laughs> for efficiency purposes, Councilman DeCicio has agreed to vote against both. Uh, <laughs> so, all right, roll call. DeCicio. No. Gallego. Yes. Nowakowski. Pastor. Stark. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Waring. Williams. Yes. Mayor Stanton. Yes, so I think it was 6-1, 6-1. Okay, next is item, or now we're on the zoning agenda. Item. Mayor, I believe 97. Good call in. All right, good. 
Councilman Cecio has to go pick up kids. He's going to be on the phone. There was a request to continue 97. Request to continue 97. Is that right? I don't know. Right. Is someone making a motion to continue 97? I'd like to make a, a motion to continue 97. What is 97? Something about a school. I just got a letter. Miss. We're all looking through our agendas real quick on 97. And Mayor, this is in uh, District. District 5. All right, so there's a motion for a continuance on 97. Does anyone want to second that continuance motion or we want to move forward today? Second. There's second on a, a continuance from Councilman DeCicio. Uh What date are you asking to be continued to? The next meeting, as soon as I can get a hold of the, the principal that wrote this letter. Okay. Yeah. So, Councilman uh, Valenzuela, this is in your District 5, is that correct? It is in District 5. For today, or you, do you want to continue? Uh, I want to move forward today. We have been working uh, diligently on this case, and uh, it has gone through the entire process. I'm very process-oriented. It's gone through the process. Uh, they work very well with staff, they work well with the community, and uh, it's, a, it's a pretty strong case, so I am in full support, and I'd like to continue with it. Okay, so the, the councilman representing the district is not supporting the continuance. Any other council members would like to make comments as the motion for continuance? Are there any cards on that item? Okay, so the motion is in favor of a continuance. Um, and then I'm noting that Councilman Valenzuela is not supportive of it. So a yes vote is for a continuance and no vote is to hear the case um, today. Mayor, some comments? Please. Mayor, I received this letter today. I'm basically just talking about uh, a dumpster on the northeast corner of the property nearest to the playground um, concerns about the smell and the odor and, and other stuff and just the variance of the height that it's um, going from I guess it's um, zoned for four stories going to five stories so I'm just concerned that the school I'm not sure if you had a chance um, council member Valenzuela to sit down and talk to the um, the principal of the school and work these things out or not. Well, the app. Thank you, Councilman uh, Valenzuela, do you want to respond to that? I, I, I'd like to turn down the continuance. We can get to this case. We can hear, uh, we can hear this case Bye. and people can uh, vote the way they'd like to vote. But, uh, you know, ACES school uh, work with the applicant. Uh, my, my, my team has been on this the entire time we're ready to go on this case okay so that is uh any other comments and members of the council okay and i think who's on the phone right now Sal, where did you go it's got, i think he has to pick up his children so do i <laughs> all right so um i'll do this as a roll call just because i i'm guessing it's going to be a split uh, vote so we can just have clarity and move quickly as possible so this a yes vote is in favor of the continuance and no is to hear the case today. Roll call. DeCicio. Yes. Gallego. So I usually give my co colleagues the benefit of the doubt when it's a continuance and they want more time, so yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. No. Stark. No. Valenzuela. No. Waring. Williams. Mayor Stanton. All right, no, so the motion to continue fails five to four. Uh, Councilman Valenzuela is in your no, district. Four to four. Four, four. four, four. Four, four. So the motion to continue fails four, four. I've clearly demonstrated my math skills. I apologize. Four, four. Uh, Councilman Valenzuela, how would you like to proceed? Uh, well, c clearly, uh, I will move approval. There's a motion to approve. There is a second. Any comments by members of the council? Roll call. Uh, Mayor, I have, I have some comments. Some Please, oh, Councilman Nowakowski, you had comments? Go ahead. Receiving a um, letter from the principal today it has the trash dumpster in the northwest, I mean, northeast corner of the property nearest the playground. Was that addressed or taken care of? 
Mayor Councilman Nowakowski, uh, as part of the stipulations, the applicant has agreed to move the trash dumpster location as well as increase the wall height between the proposed hotel and the playground area to eight feet. And then for, uh, four stories to five stories? Mayor Councilman Nowakowski, the, the request is uh, for 50 feet in height, uh, and the request is a height waiver that would go from 30 feet in height up to the 50 feet in height. They could put whatever number of stories they want to fit within the 50 feet. So it's zoned right now for 40 feet, and they're asking for 50, right? It, it's zoned C2, which allows a maximum of 30 feet in height. The okay. request is solely for a height waiver to allow that additional 20 feet of height. Okay. The use is already permitted. Any other questions or comments by members of this council? So the motion is in favor. Um, there is a second. Roll call. DeCicio. No. Gallego. Yes. Nowakowski. Mayor, I'm going to explain my vote. Um, Please. I just received this today. I didn't have a chance to talk to the um, principal. It doesn't seem like it, things were worked out according to this letter, so I'm going to be voting no. Pastor. I'm void voting yes, but um, on the matter of this whole zoning thing, I find it uh, very puzzling and a really, uh, as I stated earlier, uh, a lack of respect uh, for that council member that represents that district because uh, what any of us council members uh, in this situation will do is go speak to that representative and uh, I am just very surprised at the shenanigans that are being played so Mayor may I respond to that Real quick. No I think that was a yes hey, right okay good Mayor there's no shenanigans I just received this and I asked just for some more information on it. That was it. Thank you. Stark. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Williams. Yes. Mayor Stanton. Yes. So the motion passes six to two. Okay, now we'll move on to item 99. Uh, 99 and 100 are uh, on the same item. I guess we have to, we do a single staff report. We can hold a single, are there any cards on this on 99 and 100? There are no cards. Uh, staff recommends approval on both items on the Planning Commission's recommendation, adopt related ordinance. Could we have a very short staff report because Councilwoman Pastor has to get her kids. Mayor, members of council, uh, item 99 is a general plan amendment request to go from residential one to two. Uh, to residential two to 3.5 dwelling units per acre uh, to 3.5 dwelling units per acre. Staff recommends approval. You see the subject site outlined in red uh, right here. This is the colors on the map as it exists uh, today. It would go to 3.5 to five dwelling units per acre. Uh, that's the general plan amendment before you. The zoning case that goes with it is from S1 to R18 to allow for single family residential development. Staff does recommend approval uh, per stipulations. You, you can see on this map here the surrounding zoning of it. They're proposing R18, which is consistent with the general R110 and R18 pattern of development in this area. This, uh, here's the proposed site plan uh, as it goes, comes forward. And then this is some uh, uh, exhibits to show what it'll look like on the outside in terms of trees and some of the, the uh, outer wall exhibits. The request was approved by the um, South Mountain Village Planning Committee by 11 to 2 vote uh, for the general plan amendment and the uh, village voted 10 to 4 to approve the zoning case. The Planning Commission re recommended approval on both 6 to 0. And with that, we're happy to answer any questions. Any questions? I'll now open the public hearing on 99 and 100. Are there any cards on 99 and 100? Is any member of the public here wishing to provide comment before the City Council on item 99 or item 100? Going once. Going twice, public hearing is now closed. Uh, this Councilwoman Gallego, this is your district. In um, how would you like to proceed on 99? Thank you. Want to thank the applicant. This originally um, had some difficulties at the village and and did not pass, and they went back a second time and worked with the community. I move to approve per the Planning Commission recommendation and adopt the related res resolution. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any comments? Right, oh, Mayor. Oh. Councilman Gallego, please. I'm happy to support you, Councilman Gallego. I'm sure you worked really hard, and I'm sure staff did. And I'm sure you all worked with the community there, and 
I'm with you on this. I'm support. I'm saying I'm voting yes. All right. There's a. There is. A, a, Mayor Councilman Nowkowski, please. I didn't receive any complaints about this or last minute, so I'm supporting it 100 percent. There's no shenanigans going on here. Thank, Thank you. you very much. <laughs> Good comments. Crazy. Roll call. DeCicio. Now he's gone. Gallego. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Williams. Yes. Mayor Stanton. Yes, that was a yes by council or vice mayor. You got it? Okay, she got it. <laughs> All right, so that passes unanimously. Item 100, Councilwoman Gallego, please. Motion to approve per the Planning Commission recommendation and adopt the related ordinance. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any additional uh, comments? Roll call. I always made it so I can't. I know. Right. DeCicio. Gallego? Yes. Nowakowski? Yes. Pastor? Yes. Stark? Yes. Valenzuela? Yes. Williams? Mayor Stanton? Yes, that passed unanimously. Item 101, consideration of citizen petition related to uh, the citizenship question being added to Census 2020. That was presented to us a few weeks ago. Vice Mayor, do we have a motion on the citizen petition request? Mayor, I believe staff's recommendation is to continue to uh, investigate this and look for other um, details on how this could proceed. So that's my motion. Second. All right, uh, so the motion is to, to kind of direct staff to actually investigate the impact, likely impact on the citizens of the city of Phoenix if a citizen question is on the 2020 uh, census. Uh, Sean Severud, would you like to provide testimony on that? This was your citizen petition. Good to see you. I like your shirt. Uh, members and mayor, uh, uh, I do appreciate you taking a look at this. The reason why I put this in the form of a citizen petition was really just to get it out in the open. Um, you know, uh, in the policy sessions over the last few months when we've been hearing the budget updates um, and you know the census has come up I really haven't heard this brought up either by staff or the council so um, I do hope that you know this is a process through this committee that you have apparently hopefully being set up I don't know what the I would like to hear kind of what the the timeline is on that uh, hopefully it's not something that will move at a, at a glacial pace and you know, nothing will come of it because a myriad of other um, states and municipalities have already filed suit uh, regarding this question. It's a, it's a really serious thing in both fairness as well as um, obviously funds uh, coming into the city. So thank you. Thank you very much uh, for that uh, testimony. My understanding is that we want this back as soon as possible. Uh, you raised some very important issues. They were being discussed you know, not on a public agenda, but obviously individually I've had conversations. I think probably every council member has had conversations with city management about concerns about protecting uh, our fair share of federal resources, protecting our um, opportunities to have full federal representation in Congress, both of which would be dramatically, likely dramatically impacted by that question. But we want to make sure we do our appropriate due diligence. So I think it's going to come before us as quickly as, uh, as possible. Um, you, you, I think you have a highly motivated council on this issue, and I really appreciate you, you, you bringing it up. Okay, so that's the motion. There's a second. Any comments? Um, uh, roll call. DeCicio. Who's on the phone? Gallego. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Williams. Yes. Mayor Stanton. Yes. So that uh, passes unanimously. Now we're back to citizen uh, comments. Uh, Councilman Pastor, if you have to go, uh, we have a quorum present. It's up to you. If you uh, okay. Let's see. I've got a few here. Uh, number, the next one was Miss Joanne Scott Woods. And as I said earlier in the meeting, and there was not opposition with the council, you get three minutes, but you don't get extra time on citizen comment. That is a recommendation of the chair of the meeting. Okay, good late afternoon. Good late afternoon, Mayor and City Council persons. Uh, we could look at the incident involving uh, Joshua Baker, Mr. Kim Baker's son, from an historical perspective to the days of slave patrols that could at will enter, quote, Negro homes and inflict punishment, unquote, intimidating without probable cause, 
Or we could look at this incident as intimidation in our modern era, violations of human rights by police officers, with these two particular officers in a show of force gathered additional officers from their gang enforcement union and more law enforcement from the South Mountain Precinct and deployed an air unit with no probable cause. Four vehicles in a helicopter overhead, inappropriate at a scene for a civil violation. The next tactic of intimidation was physical. Forcefully removing this young black man who was the driver from the vehicle before he had an opportunity to put it in park and once removed, throwing him against the trunk and handcuffing him. The final phase was having all three young black males uh, sitting at the curb for 32 minutes, handcuffed while they searched their backpacks and the vehicle, entirely in proper detainment over a properly insured plate and a questionable tint on the vehicle's windows. These officers acted without conscience as did the assistant manager, city manager in the police department in their investigative report of the incident, and as did the department in their most recent statement that the officers acted in compliance with policy. The only honorable actor was the judge who dismissed the case after viewing the video. Um, Councilman Gallego's office has a DVD, and as you as elected officials, it is up to you to watch it and determine for yourself if you agree with the judge that is a, it is unconscionable to condone the tactics of intimidation and the evidence of false testimonies of these officers. And I, I want to give you my comments on a sheet. And Thank you very much. The city clerk will receive them from you. All right, um, next speaker, Benjamin Fong. Mr. Fong is next. Is Vincent Pachulo still here? Vincent? If yes, you'll be the next speaker, followed by Mr. Leonard Clark. Mr. Fong, good to see you. Mayor and Council, good afternoon. I have a citizen petition for you all. Thank you so much. Our city clerk will get it as soon as he's done passing out the current one. <laughs> Thanks so much. Go ahead. Uh, the healthcare system in the United States is the most expensive uh, and the least effective in the industrialized world. Uh, we pay about three times what other countries pay per capita, uh, and yet we have one of the lowest life expectancies. We have the highest infant, infant and maternal mortality rates and the highest rates of death from preventable disease. In addition, nearly 30 million people are under, uninsured and another 40 underinsured. If we are lucky enough to have health insurance, we're burdened by increasingly difficult uh, premiums, co-pays, and deductibles. The source of our healthcare woes is clear. Our employer-based multi-payer system is built for profit and not for care. While healthcare outcomes decline, health insurance companies are enjoying record profits, their CEOs are making $20 million a year on average, uh, and their administrative bloat is obscene, 18% by their own numbers. Uh, right now, there's a huge and complicated bureaucracy stand with, standing between Americans and their health care providers, one that keeps people from getting the care they need for the sake of making money. Compare this with a relatively simple system like Medicare, which bears only a 3% administrative overhead. It's no surprise that a majority of Americans uh, support a Medicare for All plan like the one proposed by Bernie Sanders in the, in the Senate and Keith Ellison in the House. Uh, Medicare for All would establish a single public universal health insurance system where everyone, regardless of their employment or immigration status, would receive insurance. This means comprehensive health care that is free at the point of service, paid for not on the backs of the sick, but through taxes on the rich. I request via the citizen petition that the mayor and council vote to declare the support, their support for Medicare for All, a plan that would provide health insurance to the one million Arizonans without it, uh, bring health care costs down for the average family by $5,000 a year, uh, and allow us to rein in corrupt pharmaceutical companies like Insys Therapeutics and Chandler, uh, whose founder was recently arrested on racketeering charges related to opioid overprescription. While this vote is only a symbolic affirmation uh, of a commitment to universal health care, the council's endorsement would send a clear message that Phoenix cares about the health of its residents. Thanks. Thank you very much. Next is Vincent Fichulo is still here? He had to leave, unfortunately. And Mr. Leonard Clark, is he still here? 
he had to leave as well. I believe there are no other citizens here to provide comment for the city council. Today our meeting is adjourned.